Hey everyone, this is Austin Schur here with We Write About Music, and today I'm on with Justin Boyd, who is much better known as Just RMR. He has just released a fantastic new EP titled Anti-Valentine, and I'm super excited to talk to him all about it. Justin, thank you so much for coming on today. How are you doing? Doing great, man. I'm doing great. The projects are, I'm feeling wonderful. I am super happy to hear that. Where in the world are you at the moment? Houston, Texas. What is going on in Houston, Texas these days? Cold. It's cold. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's cold for Texas standards. Yeah, is it snowing? No, not at all. But no. it's like it's like 33 degrees. You know? Oh, hell no. You got to come to LA, man. It's real nice over here. Man. Yeah, that weather's amazing. All right, I know. It's pretty nice. All right. Obviously, I brought you on because I want to talk about this EP. Uh, just like everything else that we've reviewed from you, it's fantastic. First thing I really want to know about is what is it about? You've, you know, you've created this project. It's, it's a record, so there must be like a, a message from start to finish. And it's, it's about love lost, really. Anti-Valentine's yeah. this, this is like This is like my first Valentine's Day in a while that wasn't with somebody. So yeah. I feel like I should I should have like not be alone so I dropped this to like you know what I'm saying like sure so this is a show that's like you don't need somebody else to love to love you you gotta love yourself sometimes so I I fully agree man that is an important thing you gotta know to love yourself and I mean what better way than to write a record about it and release it around Valentine's Day (laughs) yeah I'm gonna say though like it takes time to make music like you can't just think of it and put it out how long were you working on this before you actually you know release it Um, to be honest with you, I kind of, my the way my process goes, I kind of, I can turn music around pretty quickly as long as I can get into the studio. Sure. Uh, and when I have the idea, I can, usually I flesh it out for like a week or two. But this, to be honest with you, I probably was, had the idea of the project in my mind for like a month or two in advance. Sure. And and it just took me to really just sit down, listen to the beats and get what what I really wanted to convey, what I really wanted to say. That's awesome, man. Like, you would have no way, it sounds, I mean, obviously everything you make is professional, but just the fact that it's like the perfect blend of hip hop and then there's like this acoustic instrumentation, it's something that you could pop on and you don't even need to listen to the lyrics for the most part. You could just relax to it and have it on in the background. I found it to be a really versatile listen. Like, yeah, you could sit down and really make the connections with what you're saying and I know it's meaningful, but at the same time, if you just want to chill with it, like you could do that as well. And I think that's where your music shines the most. Yeah, man. I, I really just try to make, like you said, try to be versatile. And yeah. I kind of I kind of wanted wanted to have kind of an R and B type vibe to it. It does. So so I feel like I tried to I try to hit that on. So I feel like I, I hit the mark on that. You you part. absolutely did. Uh, now you operate as just RMR, but do you have any like outside help making this music in terms of like any other collaborators or producers that are you know that make features on your music, like background stuff? Man, my team is strong. We, yeah. we're, we're, we're strong. We're, we're solid. We're a collective group. Uh, I got my engineer Hippie. He's, Hippie. <laughs> he's, he's always with me. Uh, every time I go to sale, he's with me. Uh, he's my engineer, obviously, so he's with me. He he comes up with great ideas. Uh, we for this for this project in particular, we I wanted to do it all in one session. Sure. So I booked I booked like an eight hours to ten hour session. I was like, so it was me, uh, my my one of my brothers, uh, Co Forty Four. He he's gonna be on future songs with me. Nice. We was all in the studio for eight, 10 hours locked down, just, just flesh this out. So my team is strong, man. We, we keep it solid. They keep, they, I always want honesty. To me, I can't cheat the music. So I always want honesty on my music. If you think it's whack, let me know it's whack. If you think it's good, let me know it's good. Whatever you feel, have you feel. Totally agree. Just let me know. And I would adjust to, if I feel like you're accurate, if most people tell me I'll adjust, but my team is solid and hopefully it grows in the future. But right now I feel like we're, we got the perfect mix of people right now. I, I couldn't agree more, man. And honestly, when it comes to people just saying, yeah, this is good. Yeah, this is good. Like those are not the people that you want to have around. You know what I'm saying? Like 
there's too many yes men out there and that's how bad music gets made you need to be surrounded by honesty you need someone to tell you to your face hey this sucks like scrap it let's do something yeah. new yeah find those people you keep them around that's a fact that's a fact man. That's what's up. now you're like very consistent in your music like you're always putting out something new it feels like you're inspired often obviously i want to keep the focus on this ep but i also have to ask you know where at the top of the year right now, do you have any plans for something else, like anything that's on the horizon? Man, so the plans is, to be honest with you, me and my brother that I mentioned previously, Co-44, mm -hmm. we're dropping a, a collab like tape. It's going to be nice. five, to, five to eight songs, solid. We're already working on it in the studio right now. So it's going to be, it's going to be some it's gonna be something to something to listen to for sure. Nice. Now you don't have to say specifically because I know I want to keep something a surprise. But are you looking to experiment in your sound? Because you have a pretty consistent sound throughout, and now you're always trying new things. But keep the people guessing. Man, I feel I, I always want to experiment, but sometimes I'm like I'm still trying to find my sound. I'm fairly new to making music. Sure. I'm like I'm like four five months in, so I'm really just trying to. I'm still finding my sound. Sure. But I feel like I got I'm building a uh like how would how would you explain it? Like I'm building You're like building a up your discography. Exactly. Like a course. And I'm actually really happy that you brought that up because for someone that is just starting out, you shouldn't be expected to make the same thing. You shouldn't be expected to have a signature sound yet. You're at the point right now that you're making what makes you happy. You're trying new things. You're experimenting. Eventually, one of these things or sounds or genres or styles is going to it's going to hit and it's going to hook and people are going to like it. And then they're going to come back and listen to the old stuff. And then you're you know what I mean? Like you're continuously getting feedback on things. Yeah, that's basically, that's basically kind of how I'm trying to go about it. Like, yeah, the tape, we drop in, the tape we drop in, I'm more of. I've realized recently that I'm considered a melodic rapper. So I was like, okay, sure. cool. That's that's where I'm at. But the tape coming soon is I'm still having a melodic feel, melodic sound, but it's much more rapper. It's much more okay. bars. It's much more. So I'm trying to experiment, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying yeah, to man. You gotta do you gotta do what makes you happy. You're the one putting the time and the effort and the money into making music. At the end of the day, if you're not happy with it, then I think you're wasting time. So you gotta make you got to make the music that you want to listen to at the end of the day. Yeah, for sure. If you don't love it, it's going to be hard to make it. You know I agree. I agree. Um, I'd love to know some of your inspirations. Like, who were you listening to growing up and who currently inspires your sound? Man, I'm a, I, I got old parents, so I'm, I, I listen, <laughs> sure. I got a lot of old music. I got I got old and then I got some 90 stuff. I got Michael Jackson is a huge inspiration to me. Of course. His music is crazy. Like just crazy. Boys to Men is a okay. huge influence on me. Uh currently on the rap side, TI and Jay-Z and Kanye are of course. three huge it's like I I study those guys. Like it's crazy. Yeah. So No, I get it. I get it. <laughs> the artists out right now that really inspired me and I would listen to to get like a vibe or like like the anti-Valentine I listen to a lot of no cap and uh ride right away to get in that vibe of okay. how I wanted to talk how I wanted it to feel because I feel like they can make people feel how they want them to and connect with their lyrics in a way that a lot of other artists can't do and I wanted to kind of tap into that I fully agree man I fully agree you got to take those inspirations and keep them as inspirations instead of just copying and I think that's what yeah. you're doing you're taking little bits and pieces and making it your own yeah. um, one thing I'd really like to know though so you mentioned you've been making music for four to five months now but you've obviously been a consumer of music for I'm assuming your whole life what was the thing that sort of put you over the edge to start officially making music uh it was really to get one of my friends in the making music yeah he told, he told me he wanted to make music so i i was there was uh we got a friend that makes music and we all just go to his apartment and they used to make music and i'm like okay cool 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 when, when you gonna start put like when we gonna start really doing it right. start doing it so then they got me got me in there writing a little bit so i was like okay 
let me try it. I made I made one song, and got hooked. I was like, okay, cool. And then to push us over the edge, I I just went and booked studio time. Like we all going, we book, I'm booking studio time. We going. Damn. So yeah, that's how we got started. And I also want to know about your actual performer name. What does it mean? What does it represent? Uh, just our mark. The just part is kind of an homage to my mom because she calls me oh. just instead of Justin. Uh, so she she called me Justin. It kind of a few people call me just. So my mom, mom does the same. My mom calls me Aust. So yeah, I get it. <laughs> short end of the name, man. It's kind of weird. It's a mom like, thing. Short. It's a mom yeah. thing. And the RMR is it stands for Run of My Race. So I always oh wanna, cool want to stand perspective and because I got a problem of kind of looking at other people and like comparing myself and yeah, doing that a lot, which is to me, it kind of fuels me at the same time because sure. I'm kind of a competitive person. But it, when I think of my name, it always helps me remind myself, like, stay in your pocket, stay where you trying to go. Yeah, like, man. it's only one race you, and you got to run it. So, you know what I'm saying? That's a, that's seriously an amazing name. Like I had, no, I'm really happy I asked because I mean, I get the just part kind of makes sense, but I would have never guessed RMR. That's sick, man. Um, another thing I'd really like to know is, so you've been through this process, you've, you've made a song from nothing. You've thought of the lyrics, you've gone and recorded it and produced it, and clicked the submit button when it was finished. Yeah. Is there something that you look forward to the most when you're starting on a new song? Um, finding those beats, man. Searching yeah. through p- producers' pages and YouTube, yeah. finding those beats, man. It's a... It's something that I enjoy. Uh, me and my, me and my, me and my brother, we usually we sit down for hours upon hours <laughs> looking for the right beats, man. That, I, I really enjoy it. That's one of the things I kind of look forward to when I first start. Cause to me, once I got the beat, the beat tells me what the right at a certain point. You know what I'm saying I get the totally I, after I get the hook, I get the hook. Basically, the 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 beat tells me the hook, and then I gotta write my verses on my own, but. You know what I'm saying so I, I really enjoy starting that process with the beats. Yeah. Damn. That's cool, man. Uh have you are you touring? Are you playing shows at this point? Nah man. Nah. I, I'm actually starting to look into open mics to get into Yeah, for, there you go. For like within the next month, two months, trying to start getting into performing. Cause I I, I don't know how how would I how I would feel. I'm I don't really have stage fright. But just, yeah. I just want to get started. I, I understand. Get started. Yeah. You no, know, it's yeah. something new. I don't want to have when it, when I got to get on stage for something important. Right. It'd be my first time. I want to get some type of. I agree. Nah, man, you got to start small. Start small. Yeah. You got to start at a place that there's like five people there and they're not even yeah. paying attention. They're yeah, just like man. at a bar and you're like, yeah, I'm going to get up and I'm going to do it. And yeah. hopefully they drunk and they vibe out. Exactly. Yeah. Alcohol usually helps in the situation. Yeah, I mean, Houston is one of the biggest cities in the U.S. So I feel like they've got a solid music scene. I think yeah. you'll have no problem getting up somewhere. It's just, I understand it's it's the scariness of doing it and preparing it and like, yeah, I don't know. Would you go up by yourself or would you go up with others? Like, I don't know. Do you do you like do you have an idea of what a live show would look like for you once you do do it? For me, I kind of I always I'm interested in like an intimate like go up me uh, a okay. microphone and a stool and I'm just like up there doing my songs and just looking at the crowd, crowd looking at me and just like more uh, intimate things. So I would probably for my first time I would probably go up there by myself, but if if it requires me to be up there with my partner, Co Forty Four. Shit, it, it don't matter to me either way. I just want to get up on sure. stage. I think it'd be a little bit easier, a little bit easier with another person as opposed to just yeah. all eyes on you. Yeah, so, so I don't gotta remember a whole song by myself. I just remember a hook and a verse. Exactly. Get about it. Okay, so how about this? If you had to pick one song out of your discography to perform, which one would it be? Could it could also be something that isn't released yet? If you have an idea. Man, um, if I had to pick one song out right now, yeah, it would probably be one to feel off this off anti Valentine. It's it's very it's an intimate song to me. Totally. So I feel like it would work with my vision of a stool, a mic stand, and me in the crowd. Totally. You know what I'm saying? So, no, I understand. 
Yeah. That would be cool. Okay. Here's another hypothetical question for you. So I think we're still at the beginning of the year at this point. What are some things that you'd like to accomplish by the end of this year? Given per perfect circumstances, no more lockdowns or anything like that. You're just doing your thing. Um, I had a previous goal, which I might have to change because I'm kind of blowing it out the water right now. Hell uh, yeah. <laughs> I, had a, I had a goal of 10,000 streams by the end of the year. And I'm getting, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to hit that before the middle of the Dude. year. So, Snaps to you. Good for you, yeah. man. That's so, huge. Yeah, so. It is, man. It blows my mind every day. Every time I look at them Spotify listeners and people that even yeah. listen to me, it's so crazy to me. But yeah, so I probably change that after I hit it. I probably change that, but that's one of the goals. I probably I want to get on stage at least bare minimum three, four times before the end of the year. Uh, and also, I want to drop after I drop this tape. I want to drop this. I want to drop at least four more songs after this at least yeah I, I have songs in mind already that I already have hooks for it I just have to find I, oh and I also want a female feature I want a female feature I've been searching for a female feature there you go for like three months now I haven't found anybody but no yeah, those, we're those even are looking goals. I feel like okay so first off I think a hundred thousand streams would be a solid goal like I think, so. I, think I do think so I think you're only going to get bigger from this point. You're not going to shrink your fan base. The music speaks for itself. You're consistent with your releases. I don't see why people wouldn't want to continue to listen after they discover it. Finding a, a female feature, I mean, it, I guess it depends on what you're looking for and if you have something written for them already. But yeah, I suppose it, ha it depends on what you have in mind. Man, I, I'm... 100,000. I mean, if I, if I hit 100,000 streams, man, I'll be ecstatic, man. I, I'll lose my mind if I hit 100,000 streams. I think you could do it. I'm not just saying that either. Like, people listen to music, man. Why not listen to yours? You know? Okay. For sure. That's a good, that's a great mindset. I need to adopt that right there. There you but go. Yeah. But yeah, man. Female feature definitely coming soon. I got to find one. I'm going to find one eventually. Somebody's going to, somebody's going to say yes. I don't know. Somebody's going to say yes. There you go. Uh, Justin, I've got one more question for you at this point, and it's a question that I like to ask as I close these things up, but basically the question is for the person that is going to discover you from this and for the person that's going to listen to your music for the first time, what is an opening message that you'd like to say to them? Man, open a message. I'm, man, if you come to listen to my music, if you heartbroken, if you lost love, if you trying to build yourself back up, I feel like my music is my music is for you. I'm getting to the point where I, I'm starting to make more happier music so we can grow together if you're down right now. There you go. So that's my opening mission. And and if <laughs> a good intro song to listen to me is go listen to Toxic. That's okay. a good intro song. You get my vibe. You heard the man. Awesome. Justin, this has been fantastic. I'm going to plug your music one more time for you here. The EP is called Anti-Valentine. This is just RMR. And obviously I recommend listening to Anti-Valentine, but you've got a ton of amazing music. So I say, listen to the rest of it. We're going to have links so everyone can listen and follow along and stay tuned for more. But it is so great to be able to put a face to the name. So I'm really happy that we could do this. And I, and I super appreciate your time today. Hey man, I, I appreciate your time, man. I really do, man. This is this is a great interview. This I think this is on my second interview, so hell yeah. Happy. Hopefully the best one. Forever. Yeah, definitely the best one. Forever. <laughs> Forever. There will be more, I'm sure. Uh Justin, again, thank you so much, man. I hope you have a great rest of your night and uh let's stay in touch. Happy to you, man. Awesome, man. Get home safe. I'll see you later. All right, bye, man. Bye.